I'm in shock. I really am in shock. 2022 could be the year that MediaTek finally overtakes Qualcomm to become the best chip maker for Android phones across the world. Surprised that I'm saying this with such confidence? Well, stay tuned till the end to find out why I feel so. My name is Eshad. You're watching Jacket English. Let's go. But before we move on, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever we put out an awesome new tech video. Also, if you watch the video till the end and if you end up liking it, don't forget to hit that like button and maybe even comment below so that the YouTube algorithm can recommend this video to more people looking for a performance comparison of the Dimensity 8100. So what we did is we recently imported the Redmi K50. Why? Mainly because we wanted to test out the Dimensity 8100 inside it. Now, the specs configuration of the Dimensity 8100 is that of a top tier flagship SoC with Cortex A78 and Cortex A55 cores. And it is also made on TSMC's 5 nanometer fabrication process. Now, before starting the test, I was under the impression that the Dimensity 8100 would be slightly more powerful than the Snapdragon 870 and the Dimensity 1200. But boy, was I completely off mark or what? Anyway, I've run a bunch of benchmark tests and a gaming test with FPS data comparing the Dimensity 8100 to peers like the Dimensity 1200, the Snapdragon 870, the Snapdragon 888, Plus, and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. The results are quite telling. And you know what? I'm really underplaying it right now. First things first, I ran Antutu and the Dimensity 8100 score is very close to that of the Snapdragon 888 Plus. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is obviously way ahead, way, way ahead. And the Snapdragon 888, the Snapdragon 870 and the Dimensity 1200 take the 4th, 5th and 6th spots respectively. Let's quickly move on to the Geekbench scores where we check for CPU performance. The single core score of the Dimensity 8100 is actually very similar to that of the Snapdragon 870. But it actually tops the multi-core score in Geekbench and it is actually higher than that of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And you know what? We've tested five phones with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 till now, and that's the max we could achieve. In fact, we ran multiple tests, and that really is the max we could achieve. Therefore, it's extremely shocking to see that Dimensity 8100's multi-core score is higher than that of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Although I must highlight that the Snapdragon 888, 888 Plus, and the 8 Gen 1 actually score higher in single-core scores compared to, you know, the Dimensity uh, 8100. Now, while Antutu and Geekbench are, you know, single run performance tests, what's more interesting is the throttling performance scores that I got with CPU throttling and 3D Mark Wireless stress test. Starting with the CPU throttling test, we ran a 40 core 30 minute test on all the phones and almost all of them were at the 72 to 73% CPU stability mark. Only the Snapdragon 870 offered 90% CPU stability in this test, but it's way underpowered and it's only slightly more powerful than the Dimensity 1200, which is again, last year's processor. Now moving on to 3D Mark Wireless stress test where we test the GPU throttling performance. Now the first thing to note is that the best loop score of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is way ahead of the rest of the processors. The GPU inside it is actually very, very powerful. However, the Dimensity 8100 came in third with 5750 points, which is a measly 44 points behind the Snapdragon 888 Plus. For all intents and purposes, the Mali G610 inside the Dimensity 8100 is actually as powerful as the Arduino 610 inside the Snapdragon 888 and the Snapdragon 888 Plus. Although, what matters is that the GPU stability is higher than that of all of the Snapdragon premium processors, which is the AAA, the 888 Plus, and the 8 Gen 1. Now, looking at the chart, you must be wondering, the Snapdragon 888 Plus has a GPU stability score, which is very similar to that of the Dimensity 8100. Well, are you watching closely? Just take a look at the other stats. The Dimensity 8100's temperature rise is lower than that of every single Snapdragon premium chip, which is the Snapdragon 888, the 888 Plus, and the 8 Gen 1. But that's not it. If you look at the loss of battery life, 
the Dimensity 8100 toting Redmi K50 lost the least amount of battery life compared to the rest of the phones. That's just very impressive to offer that kind of performance with very little uh, you know, throttling and of course, great power efficiency too. Now, this is the one that I think most of you guys would be excited for and that is the fact that I checked Genshin Impact with an FPS monitor on. We ran a 12 minute test at 60 FPS with all the settings set to high to see which of these two processors, which is basically the 8100 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 performs the best. And the numbers are just crazy. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 offered an average FPS of just 38 FPS as opposed to the Dimensity 8100, which offered 57.9 FPS. Also, if you take a look at the Jang performance, which is essentially the number of times the phone stutters within a 10 minute period, then you will notice that the 8100 just shines. Now that's also because the Ico 9 Pro tries to ensure that Genshin doesn't, uh, you know, cause the phone to heat up a lot and therefore the maximum, you know, temperature recorded after that 12 minute run was actually lower on the Ico 9 Pro. Now battery drop is very similar at about 8 to 9 percent but this is also a 12 minute run so maybe that's not really very indicative of what kind of performance you will get after a longer run. We will do that when the Redmi K50 you know drops in whatever form it does in India. In any case I had a blast playing Genshin Impact on the Redmi K50 with Dimensity 8100. It runs extremely stable and 40.9 degree uh, you know a maximum temperature is actually kind of respectable. It's not very bad either. I'd much rather have that kind of performance available to me than to actually throttle like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 does. Now, why am I excited for the Dimensity 8100? That's not just because the 8100 is a very powerful and a power efficient processor, but it's also because it will be inside phones that don't cost an arm and a leg. Now, take the Redmi K50 for example. It was launched at 2399 yuan. Similarly, the Realme GT Neo 3, which also comes with the Dimensity 8100, was launched for as low as 2000 yuan. And even if we add a markup to these prices, you're easily looking at these phones launching at about the 35,000 to even the 30,000 price range. And considering the performance is easily tameable, unlike the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, the 8100 could very well become my favorite SoC of choice, you know, pipping the Snapdragon 870 from last year. And you know what, we haven't even tested the Dimensity 9000 just yet, but we are going to be doing it really soon. Stay tuned to our channel and of course hit that subscribe button to get notification whenever we put that out. Also, I'm talking about pure performance performance here. Other parameters like the ISP and the network capabilities, all of those haven't been tested yet. So that's it from a very happy me with the 8100 inside the Redmi K50. What do you guys think? Are you excited for phones with Dimensity 8100 and Dimensity 9000? Do you think that MediaTek can actually beat Qualcomm this year? Let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, this is Ashad signing off. Keep tracking and stay safe.